Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we've got another review for the Bad Batch. So two more episodes because we didn't review one last week. Uh, we didn't review last week's episode. Uh, do you think it's probably best going forward to do these as two episodes? I guess you guys let us know in the comments below if you want that. Uh, if not, then I guess we'll just do it on a... We'll take it each week as it comes and see how the episodes are. Because um, the last episode, Rampage... Uh, which came out last week. Um, this week's episode, Decommissioned, which was the sixth episode. Um, so far, they haven't really had too much story. In my opinion, there's no, like, the only story, like, uh, set up in there is, like, uh, at the end when they're kind of talking about, like, the bounties and stuff. Yeah, and it, especially towards the end of the latest episode, which we'll get to after. But um, I guess we're not going to go with non-spoiler stuff for the fifth episode, we'll just jump straight in. So, um, the fifth episode, Rampage, where the Bad Batch go to this, uh, which, oh, uh, they went to Ord Mantell, actually, which, um, that's a reference to Empire Strikes Back, and a bunch of other Star Wars things, where, because uh, obviously Han talks about Ord Mantell in Empire Strikes Back, and we see what that looks like in canon now. And, uh, we see the Bad Batch go to this, like, kind of shady bar-looking place, where they find a Trandoshan called Sid, uh, and she's voiced by Rhea Perlman, who's uh, Danny DeVito's wife, and okay. who plays Matilda's mom in Matilda. So that was a that's a pretty cool surprise. I didn't even know that she was going to be in the show. So that was good casting, I thought. Um, and that character was fun for the screen time she had. But she basically sets them up on like a contract and says to them, "Go and get this." Like I did, I don't remember what she said. Did she say like get this thing for me? Or like a person. She like said, really I need person. to retrieve a person for me. She didn't say person, I think she said... Oh, she said re retrieve a child, I think. And then we work out that what the child is later. But anyways, um, they go... The Bad Batch go and find a bunch of Zygerians, who, again, reference to Clone Wars. So in Clone Wars, there was Zygerians. Uh, they had like a whole arc in Clone Wars. You haven't watched that part yet, have you? No, I haven't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they have like a whole arc where those slaver people were there. But they were there and they're like moving people around and the whole episode is basically just the Bad Batch trying to get this supposed child, Moochie, as we know its name is, <laughs> um, to get that child and bring it back to Sid, who's the uh, Trandoshan, again, voiced by Brea Perlman. But we find out throughout the course of the episode that um, obviously throughout the whole episode they're setting up that Moochie is this little kid. Uh, even though it's not really, it's a big rancor and it's inside a giant cage, which, um, that's, that was a surprise twist, <laughs> which was pretty interesting that they just had a baby rancor just inside a little cage, just, uh, kind of doing its own thing. It makes sense why the episode's called Rampage, obviously when, um, the rancor kind of gets set loose and starts killing everyone, but, uh, I thought that was a pretty interesting thing, and it was even more interesting by when Sid is talking, she says that my client wants the thing very much or whatever, uh, and then she goes on the hologram, and then she's talking to Bib Fortuna, so obviously we know where this is going, and we know that Moochie's going to go to Jabba, but the interesting thing is, it's not the brand call from Return of the Jedi, which I know you didn't know. I, I, you I, up, like, I, thought, it was, I thought it was, and then I thought that was really cool, but yeah. then, now I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because uh, it's not in Return of the Jedi, it's, uh, I think the rank was called Petiza or something like that, um, but yeah, that's not the rank call from Return of the Jedi, this one isn't, so maybe this is just like some other rank call, does Jabba just have like rank calls like, ready on demand to eat people for when someone happens to come and crush the other one's head with a door or whatever, <laughs> whatever yeah. happened in, it, in, in Return of the Jedi, uh, so I guess... Uh, I guess Jabba just has Rancor's just chilling there for unforeseen circumstances, but um, yeah. Uh, the whole kind of setup of this episode was basically just like that big Zygerian, like, slaver plant thing, uh, which I mean, that was cool. Uh, Omega gets some cool action scenes with the bow that she gets where she's, like, trying to learn how to use that bow. Um, there wasn't a whole lot to this episode aside from that, to be honest. I feel like I mean, it wasn't the only story progress in this episode was the fact that, you know how um they said Omega, like, at the start was, like, super alert or something, and then she knows mm. how Sid's, like, Sid, even though she's trying to hide it. 
mm. and then at the start, and then the old like the thing at the end where she gets the bow. I feel like that's the only story progress, and that's the only thing that's uh, annoying me about this show because even it's today's episode taking the time to get started up. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it, I don't know. It's like even like I know some people don't like it. Even Rebels, I'll give credit to that. By this point in Rebels, we'd had like I'm pretty sure the Grand Inquisitor had shown up by this point, hadn't he? Because he was like in the uh, about six episodes into Star Wars Rebels, I think. Mm. Uh, someone correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty so. sure that we so. that they that he'd shown up and all that stuff had happened. So I don't know. I mean, I I'm enjoying this show for what it is so far, but there's just not like a whole lot to it. It just seems like weekly adventures, which is fine for like the most part. But I'd prefer if there was some sort of overarching story or something similar to Clone Wars or even Rebels. I feel like it's fine for a kids show kind of thing, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how long it can last consistently d- doing that over and over and over again like before it gets boring um but i thought that the scenes with the like when they were fighting the zygerians and stuff i thought they were pretty cool i mean uh, they were decent especially when a uh, wrecker starts trying to like fight the rancor for dominance or whatever so it can like he could like assert his place over the rancor so it'll follow them i thought that was pretty cool uh but then obviously they keep setting the thing up with wrecker's head uh with the chip which gets kind of even more paid off um in the second episode they they develop on that a bit more but i think that's that's about it isn't it for the fifth episode i mean these episodes are are pretty short they're getting shorter and shorter this the sixth episode is the shortest one yet because i mean looking at them now first episode was an hour and 14 minutes second was 30 uh the third one was 27 fourth was 25 fifth was 25 and sixth was 24 so they're getting shorter and shorter each week um I don't know about how long in terms of like how long it's going to take before it gets to like 20 minutes or something and they're just going to be like this is too short to be able to call it an episode. So I, I don't know I guess, I guess maybe I, I, I don't think they'll do that would they because I dreamt made Clone Wars Season 7 but they had that one episode that's like 20 minutes long yeah, and it's just like know. really pointless and Well weird. they are they are doing things similar from to Season 7 if uh, yeah. you're talking about today's episode. <sighs> God, yeah, because, uh, yeah, I did enjoy, actually enjoy the fifth episode, even though it didn't really have a whole lot of story progression. And also at the end, we had the thing where uh, Sid says to them, obviously, we'll probably be working together in the future. And then um, Hunter's like, we'll see. And then that kind of just goes on from there into the sixth episode, which I don't know about you, but I did not like this episode. To be honest, I th- I think the ep- the episode since episode one haven't got better there's no episode in my opinion better than episode one i think the third one is is the one that came closest because they had the stuff with crosshair but crosshair has not been in the past three episodes which i mean i think he's the most interesting thing in the show so it's not a good sign when he's not in the last three episodes of the show and he's he was only in the first three no actually no he's only in the first one and the third one he wasn't even in the second one was he mm. so i don't know but yeah, we're going into the sixth episode now, so if you haven't seen that, click off and come back later, once you guys have seen it. Uh, the sixth episode called Decommissioned, uh, where they're going to get a, uh, what was it, it was a tactical droid head, that was tactical it. Tactical droid head, yeah. I almost forgot, because there's one thing in this episode that drove me around the bloody bend, I don't know, I almost lost my mind seeing that, how stupid it was. But uh, yeah, the Bad Batch pretty much are just kind of living on Ord Mantel for now, just chilling there. And then Sid says to them, go get this tactical droid head for me. So they go to this, like, it's like a, well, it's on Corellia, which first of all, they could have potentially, I mean, I don't, I don't know if they would have wanted them to do this, but they could have had little kid Han Solo in this episode if they wanted to, because he was on Corellia and Solo, he was just kind of living there at the beginning. So if they wanted to, instead of the thing that happens later, they could have had Han Solo show up, which, I mean, I would have taken little kid Han Solo over the thing that we got later, which I'll get to. But, yeah, uh, the Bad Batch go to Corellia, and they find this, like, it's like a droid, like, dismantling plant thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's they're just like destroying a, all the all It's like the a reverse droid factory. Droids, yeah. yeah, where they're getting rid of all the Separatist droids. And then they find the tactical head, the tactical droid's head, and they're just kind of uh, like sneaking in to go and get it they get it, they bump into someone that someone takes their helmet off and it's bloody Rafa from Clone Wars and then Trace shows up and 
the Martez sisters are back. Whoopity do. The worst characters <laughs> in the entire show of Clone Wars have returned. I mean, who, who who do you think was like at Lucasfilm just thinking, yeah, I these are the characters about them. we need to like, bring? I completely forgot about them because after season seven, I thought we're never going to see him again. Who do you think the genius was at Lucasfilm who's just like, yes, these two characters and the ones we need to bring back? Like, and it sounds like they're making them quite big, not quite big, but they're ha- having a part in what happens in the overall plot. Like, um, and in the description, it said the battery counter smugglers that are after the same target. Talking about the tactical droid head, uh, I mean, can you not think of like so many other like that? That could have been Han. It could have been Lando. It could have been Hondo. There's so it many. Could have been like, I mean, I don't it have, could have even Han's been like bounty hunters yet, if you wanted still. him to. It could have been anyone. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It couldn't have been anyone, and you picked Trace and Rafa, the most annoying characters. I think characters probably, the I think the reason why they did that, opinion. I think the reason why they did that is probably there's still characters that you know people who watched season seven of Clone Wars. Uh, mm. They're still probably fresh in people's minds, fairly fresh because they're from last season. Well, um, no, so they do that, but then they they bring Cut, who's from season two of the Clone Wars, which came out like twelve years ago in the second episode of this show. That's true. I don't know. It's just. I don't know. I I didn't see like maybe they're trying to do something for everyone, sure. like so, some like some yeah. something for the new maybe. fans, something for the old fans. But I'm not sure. I I just hate those characters. I I think they're like the most annoying characters in any of any certainly anything that Dave Filoni's created. I think they're the most annoying characters in that. They're some of the most annoying Star Wars characters in my opinion. Just like them, Holdo, uh, L three, uh. I can't even really think of anyone aside from maybe Poe in the Rise of Skywalker. He was kind of whiny and annoying, <laughs> even though I liked him in the Force Awakens. But I don't know. They, I hate that. I hate those stupid Martez sisters. <laughs> and they're not improved in this episode as well. Like you know, at the end of Clone Wars, when Ahsoka kind of left them, and I mean, I know they were still being douchey to her, but they, I thought they would have like grown from that, and they, they just didn't. They've they're, got they're worse. Just, just they're still just as annoying. I mean, uh, and then basically this whole episode is just them. Playing cat and mouse with the, uh, the head, the yeah, match. yeah, with the the head just like throwing it around and kind of trying to defend it from the uh, police droids over there, and then they reactivate the droids, like the battle droids that were in the like dismantling plant, and then they kind of kill all the police droids for them and do all the work. Meanwhile, wreckers like kind of jumping around, killing all the police droids as well. And then he smacks his head conveniently off, um, like a it's like a pillar thing. Yeah, it's like a bit. It's like a wall. And then he gets up and starts saying, "Good soldiers follow orders. Good soldiers follow orders." Like Crosshair, and like Tup, and like all those characters. Uh, but then he kind of, it's kind of just forgotten about by the end of the episode, and he wears off, I guess. I still so, think they're doing the build up. I don't mind it because I don't want him to do it too yeah. soon. Because I still I feel know, like there's I, a lot I more to see. If they. If they just had it that his head was just hurting constantly, and then uh, that was like what they did with him, where his head just hurts, and then eventually it activates, and then that's when. Like I didn't, uh, I didn't need them to have the whole good soldiers follow orders thing with him. But I don't know. I still, I still want to see a bit more from Good Wrecker, like before yeah, yeah. he turns evil. But mm. the one thing I did enjoy about this episode, two things I think, with you know the part where they t- turn the droids on, I thought that part was uh. pretty cool. And then um, yeah, when the one yeah. of them wakes up, he goes, is the war over yet? Yeah. I thought that yeah, part yeah. was pretty that cool. That was funny, yeah. And then the other part is where um, Rafa says, uh, I think Rafa says it. I don't oh, know. I can't tell the difference yeah. the, the bit with the echo or whatever. The echo, <laughs> yeah. I like that part. I thought it was stupid. pretty stupid. It's just it Trace being typical stupid Trace. But yeah, I agree with you. It was like dumb, but it was, it was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Uh, this whole episode was really weird. Uh, and then... Trace and Rafa just again being themselves and just like trying to take the tactical droid head off the bad batch and you know when uh, Omega had the bow pointed at um, Rafa I was just hoping that like she wouldn't be able to like hold it properly and she would accidentally let go and just shot her yeah (laughs) I was like please kill this annoying character because Omega's a much better character than they are but yeah they they had that whole thing with the tactical droid head and then they by the end of it, kill all the police droids and get away with the the tactical droid's head. And then they... I think Hunter or Tech, I don't remember which one, puts it on a data stick, don't they? Uh, yeah. Which, by the way, remember in the last review, we were saying Tech doesn't get much to do. That hasn't really changed. 
He still doesn't do a whole lot in either of these episodes. I feel like Echo doesn't do much either, though. Mm, I mean, Echo did stuff in the fourth episode. Well, all Echo said today is, I'm Echo. <laughs> that's pretty much yeah, what he yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. It's just a stupid joke, yeah. That's kind of true. But I don't know, he, he did more than uh, than I thought he would just like in this episode, I guess. I don't know. I, I was just kind of preoccupied with the fact that Trace and Rafa were there. Like, that, that just... I don't even know what to say about that. That, that just really annoyed I me. I think the episodes are too short to give like all the characters like enough screen time. I would agree with you, but then I don't know. Clone Wars had episodes that were that long, and that show uh, was like amazing. I mean, but I, 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 I feel like that show did be, well. Like, as good, as, yeah. I feel like that show did well in like you know with the arcs. They had like mm. certain characters assigned to each arc. So, for example, mm. if you were talking about like say the Mandalorian arc. Um, mm. or like in season two, you have Obi Wan and you have um, say Bo Katan, Pre Vizsla, and then yeah, you have like a, only four or five characters, so you can focus on that with Bad Batch because they're a group, and then you have the um extra characters that are in the episodes. I feel like mm. it's it can't be done properly without a bit more yeah yeah uh, yeah like time. Yeah, I can see what you're saying. To be fair, but <sighs> I don't know. This episode is just like, and then at the end. Uh, obviously, once they've got the data stick, Hunter gives it to Trace and Rafa because they say to him that we're working for someone who doesn't like the Empire and who'll use it for good instead of because they say to the Bad Batch like, "Don't you ca-? pretty much?" They say to them, "Don't you care what's going to happen uh, with the data because Sid could sell it to someone evil or something like that?" Uh, and then obviously Hunter says that they're just there to get the money, not ask questions, but. Trace and Rafa say they're working for someone who's good, and then at the end we see a hologram, uh, who we don't know who it is yet. Where uh, we do know it's a guy though. That's one thing we do know. And also one thing I don't understand. Um, you know R seven, the droid at the end. Yeah, that's Ahsoka's droid from Clone Wars, isn't it? I think why, so. Yeah. Why is he there? Because didn't he die in in at the end of Clone Wars? I don't know. You know why? why the, you not, I don't. Remember when all those droids were there at the end of Clone Wars, and then um, they they like bury them all with the clones, where they like stick them on sticks or whatever. Oh yeah, maybe. Of... Uh... Yeah, I- I'm pretty sure he's dead, but I thought he's alive now. I guess <laughs> I don't know how that works, but uh, maybe it's a different droid. I-, I don't know. It looked the same, and it was called R7, so I- I'm assuming it was the same droid. But I don't know. I mean, who knows? Uh, I don't really remember. Then after that, they have. Trace and Rafa staring at the hologram and we don't see who the hologram is, but we know it's a guy, so my best guess is that it's Bail Organa, maybe, that Trace and Rafa are rebels. Uh, no, because don't they say I we can't... know where the bad batch are? We can give them to you. I thought they were meant to be that bad. That's what I was thinking as well, because they did say, well, no, they say we know where the bad batch are, but they didn't really say we'll give them to you. Maybe it's Darth Maul, I don't know. These, I, these two I, characters that's what are morons I was thinking anyway, Darth so. Maul. That's why I was, yeah. I was leaning towards Darth Maul. What, what like relevance would Darth Maul? Like, why would Darth Maul care with the Bad Batch? Uh? I don't know. He was kind of screwing all the clone, clones at the end of season seven. Anyway, remember when he like, takes the door off and he starts like throwing? Oh yeah, it starts like killing them all. Yeah, yeah. Well, that thing was cool to be fair. But uh, I guess that's just because he had to escape. I don't know though. I, I don't know. I don't see. I don't see where Darth Maul's place in the show would be. But then again, there seems to be about fifty plots going on. It seems like it's taking a one division route where it's just going to set up a bunch of things. They're not paying any of them off because <laughs> yeah. they they set the thing with Fennec up at the end of the fourth episode. That hasn't really gone anywhere. Um, I don't know if the thing with uh with Sid, if that'll like be developed on anymore. If they'll do any more jobs for her, or if she's just going to be in this episode and the last one. I don't know. The show's very weird so far. Like I was really enjoying it up to the third episode, and then the last three episodes have been a bit not bad. Like the fourth episode miss. was, yeah, hit and miss. Yeah, the fourth episode was kind of boring. I thought I don't know. The second half was okay with the action. Uh, the fifth episode was decent. I thought this one I didn't like. Hopefully the next one will be good. But if not, then I guess Loki's coming, so we've got that to look forward to instead. Yeah, I don't know. True. Uh, I, re- I just really hope that this show, like, kind of picks up and gets on with it, if you get what I'm saying. I mean, I understand it's 16 episodes, but don't stretch it out. Mm. I guess we'll I guess we'll have to see. I mean, I really hope it starts picking up soon, like, next as soon as next episode. Otherwise, mm. it's going to start losing my interest. 
Yeah, it's going to start like dragging. Yeah, yeah. I don't um, know because I, I I was actually really excited for this show as well. I mean, I'm I'm not like saying I'm disappointed right now. I'm just kind of like, I mean, I, I, was, I was disappointed when playing Trace and Rafa reared their ugly heads again. But uh, the uh, the fact that they're even in the shows that like, still blows my mind. But aside from that, like I'm not really disappointed by the show, but I'm not overly excited about it. I just want to see the stuff with Crosshair again because I think that stuff's really interesting. Yeah, one thing I want to say is, do you think that we like we're like slightly like um, you know because they're taking long to figure out an overall plot or like introduce an overall mm. plot? Do you think we're like uh, expecting a plot to be introduced quickly because of how we're used to like Mandalorian and how that introduced a plot like very very? Quickly? I don't think so. But then again, I, I, the thing with that argument, I feel like that doesn't really it looks like I don't know if I'd say that I agree with that because with Rebels and Clone Wars they built up like Clone Wars obviously that was different because they had like a whole bunch of characters and they just did different arcs with those characters but this seems like it should follow the Rebels formula where Rebels just kind of got going yeah from, like especially in season one season one the story of Rebels from like the first to the sixth episode which is the point right now I'm pretty sure that was like um there was a lot going on a lot more going on than there is in this show I just want to look now actually hold on let me see which episodes of Rebels were um, were out up until this point because I thought that, I mean, I know a lot of people have issues with the Rebels and stuff, but I actually think that Rebels is pretty good, so... I yeah, I love Rebels, yeah. Yeah, so, let me just check the episodes quickly. I mean, I know they had the shorts for Rebels as well, but, yeah, by the sixth episode, I mean, the, the fifth episode is the one where the Grand Inquisitor was introduced, so... Yeah. Uh, the sixth episode was, like, when uh, they have that episode, like, you know, the whole thing with the Imperial cadets or whatever. Yeah. All that stuff, so I don't know. I feel like we're we're being perfectly fair on this show, considering Rebels and Clone Wars came before it. Not saying that I like it more or less than either of those shows yet, because it's not. I don't know. It's not like done, so I can't really say. I don't know though. Uh, I mean, I'm in a bit of a weird place in this show. I hope it picks up. That's the main thing that I'm hoping for. Yeah, but I think that's about it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's about it. So. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Be sure to hit the like button on this video and share it around YouTube. Uh, let us know what you guys thought of the episode in the comments below. Uh, check out our Instagram and newly our Twitter in the link in the description. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time. See ya.